What is up guys? We picked up a new toy today from BoatZinks.com. It's a corrosion reference electrode. And we're going to take some measurements to see if we have any stray current that is coming from the boat or somewhere in the water that may be affecting our zincs because our zincs are wearing away at a faster rate than uh, we anticipated. So uh, we picked up the kit. Wasn't too expensive, it was in the $100 range. I'll put the price up on the screen. It's at boatzinks.com. It comes with this nifty instruction manual, user guide. With a lot of information on there on how to use it. Inside the kit is this electrode. with about 20 or so feet of wire and a plug that goes into your multimeter. The multimeter does not come with the kit. You need to have your own multimeter. But uh, we're gonna hook this up and take some measurements, we'll follow the instructions, and see if we have any issues. So we also picked up some new zincs for the boat. We have a plate zinc that goes on the hull. We have the propeller shaft zincs. And we also have small round zinc anodes. Or, uh, these are actually aluminum those for the thrusters so this is what it looks like when it's new nice and shiny and this is one after one season at an old marina you see how it gets pitted well the ones on the boat after only two months in the water look like this so it's wearing away quite quick so we're going to use that test kit and see if we have any issues with the electric around the boat so a little bit here from the instructions. Let's see, corrosion reference electrode is the industry leading test and diagnostic tool for determining if corrosion is occurring below the waterline of a boat, yacht, or metal structure. It is a portable silver silver chloride reference electrode with 25 feet of a marine grade copper cable that's shipped ready to use. This is a professional grade tool housed in a plastic blah, blah, blah. Okay, so to measure your hull potential, you need to turn off all AC and DC breakers on the vessel and disconnect all shore electrical connections. So let's do that. Well, our DC is off already. We'll shut our AC mains off and now unplug our shore power. Okay, we'll unplug this top one. Okay, next it says suspend the corrosion reference electrode in the water outside the vessel in close proximity to its underwater metal within 20 feet in seawater, within one foot of fresh water. Do not move or reposition the reference electrode during testing. All right, so let's do, see how we can do that. Here's our reference electrode. I'm gonna have to put you down to set this up. Okay, we have a, the electrode suspended in the water and the rest of the wire clamped here. I have enough here to work with. Now let's see, for fiberglass and wood hulls, connect the positive terminal of the digital multimeter to the vessel's main engine block or DC power ground for metal hulls, blah, blah, blah. All right, there's the engine block over here, but we have a convenient ground strip right here where all our hull grounds and underwater metals come together. So we'll try that because it's nice and easy. Make sure you got a good connection there. It's clipped on there. Okay, next. Let's see, set the digital multimeter to its two volt DC scale. Let's see, two volts, so you got, this is the DC side, we're gonna go to two volt. All right, so now we gotta connect the electrode to the negative side. There we go. Now we have a volt reading, 1.01, essentially 1.02. Let's see, take the voltage reading. This is the vessel's hull potential. Record the voltage reading for use in upcoming tests. Okay, so let's log that voltage, 1.02. Okay, so our hull potential is 1.02. And it says here, a fiberglass with inboard engines, the hull potential should be between minus 550 and minus 1100 millivolts. So we are minus 1020 millivolts. So we are within that reading, which is good. A reading within the recommended range indicates the vessel's underwater metals protected against corrosion. Yay. Voltage reasoning below, weaker or more positive, indicate the vessel's underwater metal is underprotected and 
may be corroding. All right, so we're looking good. So far, so good. All right, so what's also good with this, it says here, if the voltage reading of any underwater metal measures less, weaker or more positive than the listed above, you need to add more sacrificial anode surface area. This is most commonly done by cleaning or replacing the depleted sacrificial anode. Low voltage reading can also occur from electrical problems within the vessel. So this is a good way to check to see if my zincs are in good shape without even diving on the boat. So that's good to know too, because we don't want this to happen. So here's something interesting of voltages that are greater than recommended. So we're at 1,026 millivolts. So if we're more negative than 1,100, we're getting close to it. It says here, the effectiveness of antifouling paints and barrier coatings may be reduced when made more negative than minus 1,100. So, I mean, we got, what, 76 millivolts to go before we hit that. So let's see, overprotection typically occurs from using the wrong type of anode, such as magnesium anodes on aluminum metal saltwater or attaching zinc anodes directly to underwater metals on a wooden hull. So overprotection, that's interesting. So we're overprotected, well, within range, but we're getting close to overprotected. So good to know. So we have a second test, verifying your bonding system. Most fiberglass hulls have underwater metals, which can be assessed and tested from inside the vessel to determine if they are properly attached to the bonding system. Zincs mounted on the vessel's hull provide corrosion protection to these metals. Make a list of all your underwater metals and measure their individual voltage, re voltage readings. Okay, so we tested our propeller shafts, the struts, and whatever through hole fittings I could reach, and seacocks, and they did have all the same readings around minus 1,020 millivolts. It says here, uh, if there's a difference between a few millivolts, then there's improper bonding of the boat's electrical system. So we're looking good there. And it also says here, trim tabs and bow thrusters are often electrically isolated from the vessel's bonding system and protected by their own zincs, which is true for this boat also. Oh, lots of tests. Test three, the galvanic isolation. When a vessel's AC shore power is connected to a dock's power pedestal, it is possible for the vessel to galvanically couple to other boats and underwater metals in the vicinity. So I'm going to plug the cable back in again and see if there's any change to our 1,020 millivolt reading. All right, so here we are without the power cable plugged in. 1019 and here we are with the cable plugged in 1014 1015 so we're off by about four millivolts let's see after plugging in the power cable a lower reading more positive of over 10 millivolts indicates uh so we're not over 10 millivolts so we're looking good so if there was a difference of over 10 and actually it's evening out now it's even going up so we're like almost the same reading. So we're doing good on the galvanic isolation. Let's do the next test for finding straight currents on your boat. This is the one I'm concerned about. So they say to find the straight currents, you want to turn on individual breakers, your AC and DC breakers, one by one, and see if you get a change of over 10 millivolts on the meter. So uh, I'm going to do that one by one turn on each breaker and see if anything's going to change that reading. Okay, I just turned on the battery charger and I noticed the voltage on the meter went down a little bit. It's close and it's about 10 millivolts it went down. So the battery charger did have an effect on that reading. So after I turned the battery charger back off, voltage came back up to 1016 we'll continue going through all the breakers here we don't have an inverter or a dishwasher or a washer or dryer or a spare the voltage went back up 1021 now 
So we're in the range. Let's turn on some of the receptacles. Still looking good around 1020. All right, so we're still at 1020 and I have every AC breaker on except for the battery charger. I'm going to turn that on now. So it takes a minute for the battery charger to kick in. And we're at 1020 right now. It's starting to drop a little bit. You can hear the battery charger kicking in. It's starting to charge the batteries. And look at that. We dropped down to 995. All right. So it's just about leveled out. It's about 10 millivolts drop when I turned on the battery charger, which is right on the cusp of what they say you need to watch out for. All right, so that's it. Um, pretty good system. Sorry guys, it's hot in Southwest Florida, crawling around in the bilge too. But um, nice system from boatzinks.com. I highly recommend it if you are a boater to pick this electrode up and do testing if you have any questions or issues with your zincs eroding too quickly so uh yeah that's it i'm gonna leave it at that if you guys have any input or any information on why i might get a slow a quick drop and then a slow rise on the uh electrode test when i turn on that battery charger i'd be interested to hear about it so uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time